1 to the power of infinity. What's the answer? At first glance, it seems obvious. 1 raised to any power should be 1, right? But this innocent-looking expression is one of the most deceptive traps in all of calculus. Let's find out why. We know 1 to any finite power is 1. 1 to the thousandth power, still 1. 1 to the millionth power, 1 again. The pattern is clear. 1 multiplied by itself, any number of times, is always 1. So logically, 1 to the power of infinity must equal 1. This seems completely solid. But here's the problem. Infinity is not a number. We can't just plug it in and calculate 1 to the power of infinity directly. In calculus, when we want to understand what happens at infinity, we use limits. We let a variable grow larger and larger, approaching infinity, and see what value the expression approaches. So here's how we test our claim. We need a limit where the base approaches 1 and the exponent approaches infinity. We'll let x approach infinity. This is our variable that grows without bound. For the base, we use 1 plus 1 over x. As x grows, 1 over x shrinks to 0, so the base approaches 1. For the exponent, we simply use x itself, which goes to infinity. Putting it together, we get this limit, a base that approaches 1, raised to an exponent that approaches infinity. Base goes to 1, exponent goes to infinity. This is our precise mathematical formulation of 1 to the power of infinity. Based on everything we just discussed, we expect this limit to equal 1. Let's see if mathematics agrees. Let's visualize this. We'll plot the function as x gets larger and larger. The blue curve represents our function. Notice how it climbs, getting closer and closer to this yellow dashed line as x increases. That yellow line is the value of e, Euler's number. The function approaches it asymptotically. So this specific case of 1 to the power of infinity actually equals e. Not 1. E. Our intuition was wrong. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. What if we change just one tiny detail? Instead of 1 over x, let's try 2 over x. Same structure, same limit behavior, just a different constant in the numerator. Notice, we only change this numerator from 1 to 2. Everything else is identical. Before we continue, let me introduce a key tool. The power rule for logarithms lets us bring an exponent down as a multiplier. This simple rule is incredibly powerful for analyzing limits like these. Using that logarithm power rule, the exponent comes down, we simplify, and we get 2, which means the original limit equals e to the power of 2. That's e squared. Just by changing 1 to 2 in the numerator, we jumped from e to e squared. So changing the numerator in the base changes our answer. But what if we change the exponent instead? Let's try one more variation. Here's the twist. 1 plus 1 over x raised to the square root of x actually does approach 1. Same base approaching 1 but now the exponent grows more slowly. It's square root of x instead of x. And this time, we get one as our answer. Let's step back and look at what we've discovered. Three expressions, all with the form one to the power of infinity, but three completely different answers. This is what mathematicians call an indeterminate form. The notation 1 to the power of infinity doesn't have a single defined value. The form arises when a function f of x approaches 1 
raised to the power of another function g of x approaching infinity. We assume f of x is positive for x near a. It's a kind of tug of war. The base pulls the value towards one, while the exponent pulls it towards infinity. The outcome depends on the specific functions involved. So the natural question is, how do we know which answer we get? We can't just guess. We need a systematic method that works for any limit of this form. The key tool for solving this is logarithms. Let me show you the general technique that works for all cases. Let's call the limit we're looking for L. To handle the exponent, we'll take the natural logarithm of both sides. We take logarithms of both sides. This will let us work with the limit in a more manageable form. Applying the power rule, the exponent comes out front as a multiplier. This is the crucial transformation. We've converted the power into a product. Now g of x approaches infinity, while the natural log of f of x approaches zero. We have infinity times zero, which is another indeterminate form. To handle this new indeterminate form, we rewrite it as a fraction. We can do this because multiplying by g of x is the same as dividing by 1 over g of x. We rewrite the product as a quotient. This gives us 0 over 0, which is perfect for Le Hopital's rule. Le Hopital's rule says that for 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity limits, provided both functions are differentiable and the limit of the derivatives exists, we can take the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately and then evaluate the limit. When we apply Le Hopital's rule, we differentiate the numerator and denominator. The exact form depends on our specific functions, f and g. After working through the derivatives and simplifying, we get some value. Let's call this resulting limit k. This is the value that the natural log of l equals. But remember, our goal was to find l, not the natural log of l. To isolate l, we exponentiate both sides, giving our final answer, e to the power of k, provided k is finite. Note the edge cases. If k is positive infinity, then l diverges to infinity. If k is negative infinity, l approaches zero. If k doesn't exist, neither does the original limit. So here's the complete picture. When we encounter one to the power of infinity, we take logarithms to convert the problem into a manageable form, then exponentiate to get e to the power of k. Let's crystallize the key insight. One to the power of infinity isn't necessarily one. It's an indeterminate form that resolves to a power of e with the specific power determined by the functions involved. The value of k depends on how quickly the base approaches one and how quickly the exponent grows. It's this delicate balance that determines our final answer, a beautiful and counterintuitive result that highlights the subtle power of calculus. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider liking and subscribing for more explorations into the beauty of mathematics.